don't know. Do you guys think we would make great pets? Do you think we would make great pets for the extraterrestrials? Would we would be would we be annoying pets? You know, man, I first heard that song when I was 17. It it came out in 93 and I was getting ready to end my junior year in high school and it came out sometime around then and man, I was really fucked up when I first heard it and I thought I thought he was saying we'll we'll make crepe Suzette. We'll make crepe Suzette. And I'm like, "What? Okay, what?" So I had to hear it a couple more times, and I saw it on MTV like a couple days later, and then I was tripping out about the name of the group, Porno for Pyros. It was like one hit, but I, I, I got to thinking about that song the other day, and I probably, the only, I thought about it about 10 years ago. I think I used it for a bumper song like, oh man, maybe like 11 years ago. And yeah, I hadn't thought about it in forever, and I don't know what sparked me to think about it, but yeah, that was, uh, yeah, we'll make great pets, yeah, uh huh We'd probably be a hassle, but you know, maybe we would. Who knows? Maybe we'd be all better off that way. I don't know. But, um, of course, this is your host with the most from coast to coast. We all survived the 11 11 11. Well, 11 11 24. I keep saying 11 11 11 because I had posted a video. I, I did a video back on um, 11 10 of 11 with my dad. We were taking the dogs for a long walk. And, I did a video um, where I'm talking to him in it, and there is a part. I couldn't really watch it again. I posted it last night, but because we have the four dogs with us. Three of them have since passed, including the second love of my life. Well, the fourth love of my life after my kids and a certain other person. Um, uh, hopefully, there'll be another one someday besides that. But anyway, uh, my dog Sparky, who was my guide for 13 years, he was with me by my side every day. Just about every day. And I'm still rocking and reeling from that loss a year and a half ago. It's been a tough year, people, uh, for me, man. I mean, my kids are all grown. And they're all doing their own thing. I mean, my wife and I split up. We've been separated for two years. Still haven't got divorced yet, but that's coming. My dog, <laughs> my dog's gone. Oh, man, I'll tell you, it's been crazy, but you know what, it's, it's, uh, we all go through our ups and downs, and that's just how it works, and that's how the ball bounces, G, you know what I'm saying, so, um, but I made that video back on 11, 10 of 11, and there's a part in there where I'm, like, over and over, I'm, like, going 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, I think my dad started looking at me weird, and I quit saying it, but, um, that was when I had only been awakened, or, I say awakened, I had my UFO contacts, the first ones about, what well, was 10, 28 of, or 12, 28 of 10, so, been about, um, yeah, it had been, what, about a month and a half, you know, a little over a month and a half short of a year at that point since I'd had it, um, you know, and um, when I say awakened, I mean the UFO context. When I speak about awake, being awakened, I was always awakened since I was born. The only thing I didn't know about was my UFO contacts. Anything that, I've said this before, anything that tripped me out or made me think something different, it was something off planet that I saw. There's nothing on earth that I've been involved deep, deep, deep into politics, not just, you know, your average door-to-door -door campaigner. I mean, like, pretty deep into them. And, um, well, and I figured all this shit out before I was even into them. So, I mean, you know, I knew. But I, I went into a lot of people that were awakened you know, and they say that they didn't realize that this, you know, the government did this or they could do that or that there was this kind of organization or that kind of organization and, you know, and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, well, there is. And I already all, always knew that. But I tell them, look, it's not as bad as you think it is, but it's a lot worse than you can imagine. Because a lot of people think about the, I've said this before, they have their mind in the wrong place when they go there with that shit. I mean, it is what it is. It, it, people are people on every level. We are all Everybody is just on a growth path right now. I mean, we all are, no matter where you're at, no matter how evil or good you're perceived to be. Everybody's on a growth path. Everybody's a human. Nobody's the separate thing from you. We're all part of God. We're all a collective. Every single soul that's ever lived. I mean, really, there's no, there's no, there's none of this separation. I mean, even you take the reptilians, for instance, draconians, the Orion, yeah, you know, them creepy fucks. You know, but you got to love them too because they're part, listen, they were created by the same, they were created by the same source and I don't necessarily mean the creator of all creation. They're created by the same sources that the Lyrans were, the Pleiadians were, the humans on earth were. 
Same group of people created them all. Yep, created us all. Yep, that's true. It's true. You know, I, I've got my story to tell about Lyra. You know, I've been talking about doing it forever. I've got, I've got it ready. There's 18 pages, though, worth of shit, and I'm just trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to get through it without having to do it in volumes and everything and talk about my past life and Lyra and the Pleiades. It's so clear to me now. And, um, but the thing I was also going to go into was that information that I had received about where we're from and who settled us here and who, you know, and whatnot and who, uh, where they were from. Um, that, that, that I'll tell you right now, I don't know where they're from. I know they're from about six galaxies away, so we think. I've got some intelligence from a, from an extraterrestrial about this. He, they don't even know. They don't know a whole hell of a lot more than we do as far as... They all know that we're part of Source and that they're part of Source too. But what I'm saying is, is even though the Pleiadians and Arcturian civilizations and those civilizations, Syrian civilizations are, you know, thousands of years ahead of us. When it comes to the God thing, they're not though. They're more spiritually involved than we are. But when it comes to knowing exactly what who the creator was and what the creation was as far as the history and the lineage of it go, right? And I guess it really doesn't matter because, um, you know, we know that we're all one with creation, you know, that we are all one and that when we wake up to full consciousness, we'll be the same thing. And I'll be you, you'll be me, and we'll just be one mind using 90% of our brain, not 10, or 100% of our brain, not 10, but more so than that, <laughs> 9,000, you know, not nine times the brain, but 9,000 more times the consciousness, you know, and really in full total awareness, but they don't understand more about the, that much more about our lineage than we do. They really don't at all for as way ahead as they are, as they have not much of a clue more than we do. There's some people that have kept some secrets in their civilizations and, you know, they know, even those people know a little bit, but they don't know where these, these, these were the gods. When we talk about the gods, these are the gods we're talking about. These were true helping gods, not manipulating gods. The Anu, they talk about the Anunnaki and stuff. The Anunnaki's fucking recent, man. That shit with the Nibiru, that's recent. That's recent shit. That isn't even, that ain't even a million years ago. It's about 500,000 years ago. There's been Earth humans on Earth since over and over again and reincarnated and reestablished. There was uh, civilizations more advanced than we are now a billion years ago on this planet. And I promise you, promise you, you'll find that out at the end of the day. Not today, maybe, but... Yeah, it is. You can take, I mean, you, you can, I, I, I would take that to the bank. Yeah, that's, it's a true story. But, that, you know, the Anunnaki shit's not that um, far back into the future, considering the span of time. It really isn't, they weren't gods, they were manipulators. Actually, they were, it was a good collective at first, okay, of different star races, but then the lizards got in there and started manipulating like they had to do because that's, you know, how they are. Um, you know, they, I don't know what the hell happened to them. They were good for a long, long time and they were master geneticists and stuff like that. They were really helpful with that, but they got manipulating. I don't know if it was what it was, but, you know, I don't know what the hell, but that's the deal with the Anunnaki. These real other gods had been to Earth a billion years ago and they had after settling and seeding the Arcturians they had went to the Pleiades Pleiades ended up getting destroyed later on the the Pleiades was actually re-terraformed when the that those two families from Lyra and one family from Vega and this other family that went with them to you know during the Orion there in wars went with got the hell out of Vega Lyra around that area and went and terraformed there, see, when they got to Pleiades, there was like 10 planets. When we, we got to Pleiades, there was 10 planets. Only three of them were habitable. The other 10 needed some work to be terraformed, and plus we had biodomes, thank God. There was this, yeah, there was us, another Lyran family, a vegan family from Vega. There's also this other family, real shiny. They lived out kind of on the outskirts by Lyra and Vega, and they, had, they were able to hang out in the fifth dimension before anybody else was doing it here up there. We were fourth dimensional planets at that point. And they were in the fifth. They knew how to hang out in the fifth and kind of hide away in the fifth to not be bothered. But they were great people. They were um, they were part of the originals. They were gold and they were gold. And one of them was my co my, my partner when I was a ship captain. He was an old ex, one that came out of retirement and worked with me. He was a gold and he had a triangle shaped head. 
he was one of, with one of the families, though, too, that helped re care from the Pleiades. Then his family left and went back home. We don't know where they went. He never talked to me about where it was. It was six galaxies away or so. And they were the only ones left. There was about 100 left to the original 20,000 that came here. But the 20,000 that came here, got to understand, that turned into about a billion all over the star system, a billion people with, um, you know, passing, you know, over fucking uh, of another billion years, right? Um, it turned into about a billion souls all over the galaxy. And this leads us up to about a little more than one billion years ago. All right, I'll talk about this another time. I got some stuff from the Blue Pleiadians to talk about, though, but I'll talk about that another night because it involves it involves about 20,000 people coming to this uninhabited yet star system. And these weren't from the same family. There was about 100 families in that 20,000. And about 35, we think, and we're from 32 to about 35 different kind of races. We're talking about, listen, I'll just tell you this. We're talking about eagle humanoids, dog humanoids, <laughs> bird humanoids, human humanoids, all different colors, different races. And what their idea was, was they lived in the galaxy that was way super ascended. But they wanted to go somewhere and st see, they all lived on different planets, right? And close together, like in a cluster, like the Pleiades is, but closer together, like planets around a, a sun. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them that were Earth-like planets. And these humanoids lived on these different planets. And they all wanted to get together and kind of, you know, um, meld together and have a kind of a melting pot. So they took off on 12 huge, huge, huge motherships, so about 20,000 of them, we think, came here. About two billion years ago. Um, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. That part of it isn't true. They About two billion years ago is when shit started to pop off. They came to this galaxy, if you want to put it in Earth terms, they came here mm, a little over a quintillion years ago. They're probably themselves about sextillion years old. They came here about a quintillion years ago and started to settle in Terraform Arcturus. The Lyrans weren't too far behind after that, after help, after getting the Arcturians up and going, then it was over to get the Lyrans going. Okay, the Arcturians did not, they helped a little bit with the Lyrans, but they were still developing themselves. It was really the Pleiadians that Arcturians have helped with their Lyran offshot. Okay, and it, it kind of boggles the mind of the Pleiadians as to these, why 70% of our star systems, or I mean our indigenous cultures have you know, stars and things like that um, dedicated to Pleiades. And, you know, and the Pleiadians saying our ancestors, your ancestors were our ancestors and our ancestors were your ancestors. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, oh yeah, it's very, well, we know it's true. But it's from a long time ago. And listen, those Pleiadian gods that helped us out and did all that, that's not necessarily this Lyran incarnation of them. There was others there. That planet got destroyed. See, they were very peaceful, loving people, these gods. But, you know, after a billion years or so, uh, things started to go south. You had, you already had, you know, hundreds of generations later of people that had gone, all, gone and terraformed, like Orion, Draco, um, you know, Earth several times, Mars, you know, Lyra, um, all these different humanoid races. See, all the humanoid races, reptilians, us, the even the avians, any, they, they all come, we're all offshots of them. We have been designed, though, by offshots of them, you know what I mean? They created all these different races in the galaxy, and they were different themselves. This wasn't, like I said, this was about 100 different families and about 35 or so, 30 different races of people that came here all those years, you know, quintillion years ago to do this. So, listen, you know, it was kind of a relief to get this answer. I had been knocking my head out wondering. I know the Arcturians are the oldest humanoid race in this galaxy. We can argue about them in Lyra. They say the Lyrans are. The Lyrans are the oldest, closest to Earth human type race in the galaxy. The Lyrans are, but it's close. The Lyrans are not that much younger than Arcturus is, the beings in Arcturus. Okay, it's like 1A, 1B, but Lyra is a little bit younger. Uh, all in all, okay, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, we could we could get caught up in squabbling about that, though, and forget about the bigger picture, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll agree with you. I was older. Fuck it. Yeah, you know, but... So those, those were their first two babies, Lyran Constellation and Arcturus. 
Um, they were about to run out of food and supplies and shit. They, they had enough for five years. Lady in this diary transcript that was read by a guide of mine one time. Um, it was, she was writing about, it was during her several, she had been here several lifetimes already. And she, when those wars, a bunch of wars were popping off between the younger generations, planets were getting destroyed and her mom saved a writing or her daughter or something saved one of her writings. And she was writing in there that she hadn't felt that kind of anxiety and angst and was reflecting on when they, when they came over here and when they were trying to find somewhere to settle and she said, I must have something to the effect of, I must have counted three, four or five galaxies. Now we pass through, we're almost out of supplies. I hope we find somewhere soon. We've been, we're about to run out of time. I understand or time to them is different, but this is what was kind of tracked down that it was a five year. They had enough supplies for five years before they had to really find somewhere to, you know, settle up. I mean, and I guess they were within a couple of Earth type, Earth like months of being out of everything. And luckily they stumbled upon Dark Taurus. Yeah. And, you know, so it goes. So, you know, I've been beating my head against a wall forever trying to figure out in trance who they were. I had gotten that the Arcturians were the oldest and Larens were the second oldest many, many years ago. Way before I think even come on air, I got, I received that. It was in 2012 or 11, late 11, when I received that info. But I could never figure out who well, who brought the Arcturians here, who brought them here. I'd ask my orb guides over and over. They didn't know, they didn't know, they didn't know. Um, and, um, you know, I would just beat my head against the wall trying to find out who seated them here. Then I told my guides finally, I hadn't talked to them about it in a couple of years, and I told the orbs, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start looking at maps of galaxies that are close to us. Um, and see if anything stands out in my mind from past lives, and, and they didn't say nothing. Didn't say nothing. And then the the rainbow one and the blue one came to me, like in my consciousness later, and wanted to talk to me about something that they had found out. And they started in with that, you know, that uh, the Arcturians aren't exactly the oldest humans to ever be here, humanoids, and neither are the Lyrans. And I said, well. They're okay, but they're the oldest here. He said, yes, they're the oldest here. They're not the oldest to ever be here, though. I said, okay, I've heard of civilizations vanishing. He said, yes, you have. And I'll, let's, we'll tell you a little bit about who that was. And it was weird, because I don't really listen to Bashar a lot. I'm a Kronon guy, but, you know, Bashar's good for the elementary kids, and he's kind of entertaining. But um, he was talking about, to some guy asked him, you know, who the first civilization was. And Bashar was getting some clarification, asking the dude, hey, you mean on Earth or do you mean in general? Where, what, where? He, he's all, well, I mean like on Earth. And he's all, well, and Bashar told him something defective. They don't, hey man, they're not around anymore. They don't exist. We don't have a name for them. And I think Bashar probably knows, but you know, he's not gonna, that's something you don't divulge easy. Because these gods are gone. We are the gods we've been waiting for. They're, they're long gone. I mean, like I said, there's like a hundred left when they left here. I mean, it was, you know, one mixed, three-way mixed family of them. They were like a combination of a, um, okay, they were golden. They were a golden glow with like golden heads that were triangular. And they just radiated pure love and energy. But they would light in their face, which you looked right in the face. They looked like they were a combination of almost a African-American, Hispanic, Nordic, if that makes any sense. I know that's kind of, yeah, <laughs> But it really, they, they, they did. That's kind of what they look like. And they figured out how to um, hide out in the fifth dimension from evil and, you know, dark forces and things like that. And the Pleiadians were actually the second race to use that, too, to kind of avoid Orion and the Dracos for a while. You know, I mean, I knew that. But I knew that. And then there's this video out now. A buddy of mine sent it to me last night. I seen, I watched it a few months ago, and I think I reposted it. It's really good. It, the only thing that pissed me off is it's not a movie. It's like a made trailer. It's like a movie made to be a trailer. Astral Travel, Pleiadians. I mean, it really is good. It shows... It, whoever designed it knows the truth. Because, you know, that's some of that shit's information I've never even divulged to anybody before. I mean, I told them about the Pleiadians being seated by Lyra, but what I didn't mix in there to... 
throw throw in any complications with it. Vega was involved too a little bit. This other race that's no longer here was involved a little bit. This family that took off. And the fact that um that it was, you know, that it was about four different families that were involved. I mean, in that 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 they had to be re terraformed and you know, I, I was just very general with people about that information. I was guarded with it. And so somebody else knows it too. You know, and so that that's cool and that's great. But they should have made that thing a movie. I would check it out. Astral Travel Pleiadians. Um, and then I saw it somewhere else too and it was called All About the Pleiadians. But it's wonderful. It shows the different... Um, climates up there it shows how gorgeous their coastlines are especially the places that have several moons oh man it's really in the different races that are there different different kinds of people different tons of different humanoids i would know that because i've you know i got a couple months ago like i said over earlier over a 12 day period 10 to 12 day period i um had a contact with eight different races from there you know it wasn't just the orb race i've always contacted or a few people here and there that 